Good morning. morning. It's a good day to be in church or to be with the church. How many of you know the church is not an event? Uh, It's not a building. It is a a very active, it's more of a verb than it is a noun. It really, that's what, what, what it's alive. Um, It's an assembly of God's people uh, to carry out Uh, his works here on this earth. So we're going to talk this morning uh, for actually not just this morning, but for the next three weeks, we're going to be talking about vision. I mean, talking about vision and um, just a re-clarifying, a sharpening, uh, uh, setting your, our our aim as a church to, to what we're to be chasing, what we're to be going after. And so uh, this is a series for the next three weeks. We're going to be talking about this, which is on the wall, uh, preaching Jesus, everyone, everywhere. We're going to talk this morning about preaching Jesus, but before we really talk about that, because sometimes um, it, it, I, want, I want this to be clear, that I don't want to give you something to do. I, I don't want what I, what I share in this, in this next little bit to be like, well, pastor said this, and, and i got to find out what pastor said so I can do what pastor said. I, I want this to be uh, just something that um, what happens in this time is... Uh, we're not limited by a list. We're, we're, we're limited. We're not limited at all because we see. We see. So like the Bible tells us that in, in Psalms 119, 105, that his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, right? And so you're not limited in your life by anything except for how you see. You think about when, the, when you're walking through the, if I was to walk in here, Right now, and all the lights were to go out, and I was to walk right here. I, I would be like, okay, uh, you know, I, I'd be limited by how I see in our in our lives in our, as a as a student, as or as an employee. You, you, when you believe, or how you see, is that you're sealed, right? You're limited because even your approach to your work, right? It, it, you no longer apply yourself to go up. You just apply yourself to remain or to leave. Right? And so your stewardship of the little things, you're, you're, you've already, you're, you're as far as you can go. No one's ever gone beyond that, and that's the end. It's a dead end job. If that's how you see it, that's how you'll treat it. So you're limited so much in your life, not by where you are, but by how you see. Your marriage, if your marriage is on the rocks and there's no hope for it, that's just what you just told me, is you, you see no hope. For your marriage, and therefore, and from that place of sight or lack thereof, you make you make decisions, you make actions, you 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 move, we move, and so we're limited in life simply by what we see. And so this morning, as we go and as we talk about vision, I, I really wanted to, to this morning just to allow the Word of God. Just going to read probably eight scriptures and just let the Word of God speak to you and bring light to you because there's application. Um, based upon the gifts and the callings and designs and how he made you. So the Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. There are intricacies about you. There's, 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 there's your, a laugh that you only you can laugh. How many of you have heard Mona's laugh? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, I was hoping to get one right there. but <laughs> Okay, or whatever it is. I remember when we first moved here, um, we had, Matthew was in, he was a baby. Um, and I remember uh, um, we were, I went to Mazio's and Matthew, um, I, I, he, she went, Baha! okay, it was, I, don't, I can't do it like her, but, and, and Matthew started crying, right? <laughs> anyway, he scared him. He was like, Baha! anyway, what I'm saying is, I'm not just talking about a laugh, I'm talking about personalities, I'm talking about how God knew you, informed you, and, and there's, there's in, impact. I, I can tell you uh, there, there's impact uh, from j- just uh, people that, all different, all different makeups and, and designs, and sometimes we would say even like if somebody would be slower, that, that, that I'm telling you, I can't tell you how many times my heart, and my, like God has worked in me through those people from their tenderness and genuineness. And even though as an adult they're like a child, God, God speaks and, and there's a way to... You, know, you see what I'm saying? How God has every... He, he's got a design and, and he's designed you and me to live from a place for his glory. And, and it's not to be, um, okay, well, i got to check what I do next. And to be a limited church because 
uh, uh, limited people because we don't know what to do. We ask the question, well, what are we doing as a church? That question is, 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 a, is a really tough question. What are we doing as a church? And we're waiting for something to be just organized. And the church it becomes an organization more than the way that God designed it to be, where, where it lives and moves and has its being because Christ is in us and Christ in you and me is the hope of glory here on this earth. The hope of goodness is Christ in you and me. The fact that he lives inside of you, the fact that the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead lives inside of you, that is the hope to the world if you and I understand what we've been commissioned to do. And so this is what we're going we're gonna to talk about uh, uh, this morning. But before I re read a couple of these scriptures about who you are, I, I want to lay that foundation. One of the things um, I want to do, actually, uh, Ev shared this with me this morning, and uh, it, it was just so, so right, and so I wanted to read it. It's a word of the Lord to this house um, by Brother Marty Blackwater. And uh, he said this, the Lord said this uh, through him. I just hear the Holy Ghost saying, that through the years you've made steady progress toward the advancement of the vision that's been set before you. And even though at times, and, for, and from a natural perspective, the progress or forward momentum sometimes seem to vacillate or seem slow, know this, that you are in the perfect alignment and harmony with my times and seasons. And as you well know, foundations take time to formulate and to solidify before the fullness of a building can be erected upon it. So you've been in a season of solidification, redirection in some areas, but also assessing where you are and where you are going. But be confident of this. I will perfect that which concerns you and this body of believers. And I will bring to full fruition the vision, the plan, and the purpose, e e even though from a natural perspective, sometimes Things seem impossible. That's my specialty, says the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Making yeah. impossible things possible. So be confident and continue to move forward with a sense of expectation, anticipation, and internal confidence that all that has been spoken, decreed, declared, prophesied, prayed for, and envisioned in the heart it will come to pass. And your hearts will be glad. And the hearts of those who are with you and walk beside you will likewise be glad. And the impact of this mission, this ministry, this church, these people will continue to increase, not only in this city and in this region, but around the world, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that was something that was important to start today out with, Amen. is just um, acknowledging uh, the things that God has spoken. There are dreams, the gifts, and callings on the inside of you. There's visions of your heart. Um, and sometimes it's easy depending on the age and the stage. And maybe uh, that was a dream of yesteryear. Let me tell you, God hasn't forgotten his word. He's watching over it to perform it. Sometimes because of conditions and things of that nature, we let go of what he said. Um, but I just that would be an encouragement. You know, Habakkuk chapter 2, uh, 1 through 2, we're going to put that up there. If you'll put that up there on the screen. And I gave that to him really late in the game. Um, it says, I will take a stand at my watch post. So this is what we're going to talk about today. It's not just something that just is like, oh, this came from a watch post. What we're talking about is reclarifying uh, where we were talking about to know him and make him known. Um, we're clarifying, bringing greater clarity and accountability to what it looks like and what we're doing as a church. And that's preaching Jesus. Amen. Who? Everyone. Everyone in the house, where? Everywhere in the world. The message of Christ is for Everyone, everywhere. But the message of Christ can only come when, it's, when we understand everyone in the house is to go everywhere in the world. Yeah, yeah. And so this is really, really important. And so this message is just like in Habakkuk where he's talking to the Lord and he said, I'm going to stand on my watch post. And in other words, I'm going to look. And that's really what a, 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 pa a pastor I I is of a church where the Lord would be. He's an under shepherd of our chief shepherd, the Lord, where he would say, Lord, what do you want to say to the people? What do you want to feed? He, the Lord that says this, there's a promise from him. He says, I will give you pastors according to my own heart who will lead you and feed you with wisdom and understanding from him. Yeah. And so there, there, there is, it's not, it's not just a man here. It, it's God say, it, it's, a, it's a God 
desire that he places in because of because of what the design that he has for his people. I can't I can tell you sometimes I don't want that desire. I I don't know you, you may not understand. Sometimes I don't want that. I mean there's been times in my life I don't want that desire. I want to just not have that responsibility or that weight. It's kind of like being a president might not just be the most cool job. There's sometimes you're like, this, I hate this job because of the decisions and the, thing, you know, and the weight of my decision and what I say or don't say or what I do or don't do. When I say if I'm going to stand with Israel or I'm not going to stand with Israel, thank God our president made that clear just yesterday, last night. That I'll make no mistake about it, I'm going to stand with Israel. I don't know if you, how many of you know that, uh, of the attacks uh, uh, in, at war just, just like that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and last night we, we prayed uh, for Israel. For Israel. Um, we're going to do that at the close of this morning's service as well. Uh, but he, he said, so, so here's Habakkuk, uh, the prophet. He's saying, I'm going to stand on, on the watch post. And I'm going to watch and find out what the Lord's saying. I'm going to get my pen you know, um, and look at what he says and see what the Lord will answer. And this is what the Lord says. Get your pen, verse 2. Lord, answer me. Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets so he may uh, run who reads it. Uh, I mean, or he may read it on the run. Or he uh, talk, really he's talking about um, a herald, taking a herald. Make it so clear that, that you and I can go with a message. And so there's kind of clear, big and clear right there. <laughs> big and clear. And, you know, um, as much as it's important to have the vision before you, it's important to have the vision before me. Because um, <clears throat> so many times we're capable, we're just not accountable. You know, like I'm capable, I'm just not, I'm just not accountable. And, uh, and, and it is that place of accountability. Something I shared uh, last night with our, our, on our team night is that so many times that accountability is just in a form of a question, you know. Uh, in other words, like when mom and dad, you know, you're going to have to answer a question. Where were you? <laughs> you were supposed to be home at 10 o'clock. Hey, where were you? You know, how many of you know that there's because of that question that might be coming, you know, there, there's this accountability that, you know, um, you're going to have to live up to it. Same with it with a boss. Anyway, so Habakkuk 2, 1 through 2, just again, talking about keeping the vision before us as a church uh, and that the vision is it's it's. What God's wanting to do here, it's not just some man-made deal, um, it's, it's just, it's him. Thank you, Lord. It's, it's the, the working of his foundation. So Proverbs 29, 18 tells us, or let's go to Psalms 119, 105. I already quoted this to you, but the Bible says this, that your word is a lamp to my feet, it's a light to my path. So it shines at my feet and it shines ahead to where I'm to go. So there's at, the word of God allows application to my day, to my life. There's because the light's there now. I, there I can I can make a move right. And then the last verse, uh, Proverbs twenty nine eighteen, it talks about where there's no vision, people cast off restraint. Um, where the, and this is the amplified where there's no vision, no redemptive revelation of God. So that's what I love. I love that that the redemptive revelation of God. The people perish. But he who keeps the law of God, which includes that of man, blessed, happy, fortunate, and, and, and I don't know, I can't read that word. En enviable? That's enviable? Okay, enviable. Didn't look right. How many of you have ever done that before where you're like, that doesn't look like enviable anyway? But it is, or is he? All right, so we know that we need a God-honoring vision. How many of you have a God-honoring vision for your life? Uh, this is a. This, sometimes we have visions for our life, but is it a God-inspired vision, right? So this is a good thing to ask ourselves: Is my vision just a self, uh, you know, inspired vision? You could go to James and says, "Hey, we have not because we ask. You have not because you ask not, or you do ask, but you ask just for yourself." Like so, that matters. It matters that whether or not my vision, uh, the vision for my life, is God authored, right? Because God authored, a God-authored vision would be a God-authored word, or, and it would carry the light to bring it about. It wouldn't just be a dream, but it would come with his ability. It would come with his grace to carry it about. And so this is what's so cool when, again, as before I start reading uh, the, these scriptures this morning, going back to the word of the Lord, the things that you've seen in your heart, that seem, you know, the, the, the God-authored visions, there's, his ability comes with those things. To, to he, he, his ability, his specialty, 
is to carry about the impossible. So don't stop asking, right? Don't stop asking for the, the impossible. Don't stop asking for the God-authored visions of your heart, okay? For his glory. All right, so um, here we go. Let's just, I just wanted to read some, a few scriptures this morning that would bring maybe just simple sight, um, and, and therefore, uh, you just may, there would just be an, a, a walking out, um, just an impartation of just your and my life, what we're here for. Um, if, if there's something that I, I grew up with that my dad taught me, he, he wanted us to be able to just see. You maybe heard this term self-assess. You know how sometimes you can come in and 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 to some degree in, in my life there it had been has been a struggle um, at times where I would be frustrated with somebody because of like can you not see we we do this in driving you know like hello okay or but if you have your hands full I don't know if anybody's ever experienced this um, but you have your hands full of Walmart sacks. Um, and you're trying to get the door, and somebody else is standing there, and they're just like, da, 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 da. Um, I've been known not to use my words, but to be like, hey, bro, or like, hello, McFly. <laughs> Do you see what's going on here? <clears throat> and so, and, and I, I don't think that's healthy in that, in that way. When my, my wife would say, well, use your words. And I'm like, use your eyes. <laughs> okay? Um, and, and so it was, it was just one of those things that at a young age that, that my dad really drilled into us to be observant um, and to look and to, self, and to self-assess or to be able to see what's going on, to be of help. And my dad was, uh, he, he was in construction. He did painting. And at a young age, we'd be wiping boards, um, staying off boards. I remember out at the shop, we would, and he would show us how. And you had to see that it needs to look like this. So here I am in kindergarten, and we got rags, and we're wiping baseboards for this. And, and he was spraying the stain. And as fast as you could go, you keep up, but you make it look like this. If you don't make it look like this and you miss this, then you, there's a problem. So you got to you got to self-assess, check over your own work. I don't want to have to come back. So th- these are things that I've, and, and so I, I, there's something that I value, um, and I, say, I think it's something that um, really God wants for you and me. More, I, as a father, my father was teaching me how to have application to my days, to, in other words, to see. He was just teaching me to see. Uh, as a young man, I believe God wants his people to see. Amen. And this is why he gave us his word. And so the Holy Spirit bring. When, it's amazing what happens when, when we just simply see who we are, uh, what God designed us for, and all of a sudden there's application. When you see that that screwdriver, you're like, oh, I can use that for this. It does this. It does. Okay. So here we go. Second Corinthians five twenty. Uh, this is. I'm going to read this out of the New International's ver- uh, New uh, International Readers Version, uh, and not just the NIV. But you're going to see the word ambassador on the screen. Um, but it says this, so we are Christ's official messengers. That's what an ambassador is. But the, the New International Reader's Version says that this way. So we are, we are Christ's official messengers. It is, is, it is if God were making his appeal through us. Here's what Christ wants us to beg you to do. Come back to God. Read it from here. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God is making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. God is making his appeal through you. Let me ask you, what is he saying through you? What is he saying? 2 Corinthians 2, 14. But thanks be to God who always leads us triumphantly as captives. As captives in Christ and through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of him. Thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph or triumphantly as his captives. So if I'm his captive, that would make me a prisoner or him the master. So he's my master. What is he saying? And what is he doing with my life? He's using your life. He's using my life to bring a fragrance. 
You're a fragrance. To smell Him. That the world would smell or experience Him. You know, it's amazing how smells stick with you longer than anything else. A smell. An experience. An encounter where somebody through your life, through my life, encountered God. They just, there's a, and they recognize they recognized him through the, through the fragrance of your and my life. Yep. This is what we're talking about. Last night we had some testimonies of, uh, uh, from people and talking just about the, the significance of the, the, the local church and how our, the people of God, okay, not, not an organization, but his people changed their life. And there was this guy that made a phone call, this guy that reached out, this guy that did this, this guy that... You, you know, help me do that. Like, it was just all of these people. What was it? They saw God. They saw God. They saw God. And they, they came, because of seeing him in his goodness, it, it, it drew them to him. Amen. Luke 14. So <clears throat> this is who you are. So you are a messenger. God, God is, is making the appeal through you. You are a fragrance. Out of the, I'm going to read this uh, 2 Corinthians 2.14 out of the New Living. But thank God he has made us his captives and continues to lead us along in Christ's triumph, triumphal procession. Now he uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere like a sweet perfume. Luke 14.23. Luke 14.23. So the master told his servant, go out into the highway and byways, the hedges, and compel them to come in. So that my house will be full. You are the compelling statement. You are the ones that are to, are to compel. Both through our words, through our actions, through an invitation. So you're the inviters. I'm the inviter. In, invite to what? To, to Christ. I'm the, I am the one that holds the invitation to Christ. You are the one that holds the invitation to to Christ. I, 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 thinking about this, that if, if I'm not concerned about lost people, if you're not concerned about the lost in this world, who will be? Yeah. Who, who will be? Yeah. Ephesians 1, 23, the church you see is not peripheral. This is out of the message. You can, you, you, so it really won't, it, it correlates, but this side of the message. The church, you see, is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. In other words, the main thing going on is what God's doing in this church. Yeah. The church is Christ's body. In other words, this is how God is experienced and brought to life here on this earth. It is through you. Yeah. The Spirit of God, it's in you, and He wants to be released through you. Yeah. This is... This is how it works, through his body. The church is Christ's body in which he speaks and acts, by which he fills everything with his presence. So let's just say it like this. Again, the light of God's word. Just say, You're the presence of God here on this earth. You carry the very presence of God. Where you go, there he is. Wow. I always wish God could show up, okay? Show up. This is important for us to understand that I'm a fragrance. I'm a perfume. I'm an invitation. I, 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 am, I am his presence. I carry with him the help in time of need. That's what, that's what you and I carry, but I, I think we've, we've so much have become uh, in, in the church, it's become consumer instead of distributor. You're not, a, you're not just a consumer. You're a distributor. I am a distributor of Christ. Yeah. Whew, that's good. Because if I'm a distributor, that means I have the storehouse. How many of you know if you're a distributor of something, that means you have the supply? I have the supply, all the promises of God, all of heaven's assistance, all of who he is. We, we're, we're in covenant relationship. Uh, you know, so we're the body of Christ, but you are, you're the bride of Christ. You're the bride. Let's keep reading here. Colossians chapter 4, 2 through 6. 
He says, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And as you pray also for us, that God may open the door for the word, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am changed. Pray that I may declare it clearly as I should. Act wisely toward outsiders, redeeming the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. So you're, you're, you're the one that brings clarity, but you're the one that brings flavor. I, I think this is so, such, I underline this in my notes and in my Bible, uh, in Colossians chapter 4, verse 4, it says this, pray that I might declare it clearly as I should. Lord, let me, this is, what a prayer for the church right here. Let me declare clearly who you are as I should. This is powerful. And he says this, and, and why, act wisely, redeeming the time. In other words, buy up the time. Take advantage of the time. Let your speech always be gracious and seasoned with salt. It has, you're, so you're the salt. You're the, you're the seasoning. You're the, the, that which, uh, it, not just the preservation, but also the flavor of God here on this earth. So you taste and see the Lord is good. You, you know what, what happens when the, you get some fries and, and, and they're, they have, they're just bland? What do you do? Get a little salt on them and, and it's like all of a sudden these are good. Because salt brings out the flavor. You're the flavor, we're, we're talking about this, the flavor of God here on this earth. This is important. Did you know people are constantly tasting of you? It's happening. Let's, let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew 5. 13 through 16, salt and light. You're the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out underfoot. So you're the salt of the earth. We just had established that in the previous one. You're the flavor, the preserving agent. Um, you are the light of the world, next verse 14. A town or a city built on a hill. Cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, in the same way that this candle brings light to the whole house and that there's a purpose for that candle to illuminate, he said, You too, so let your light shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Is that what it says? They would see your good deeds. So you and I, we're, we're, we're not just the light, but we're the working of God here on this earth. Right. We're the working of God here on this earth. If you want to see God move in, in, our, in your life, Pastor Evan was talking about this this morning, start seeing God move. But I can tell you this, God wants to move a lot more, but he wants to move through you, his people. God is, God is wait, he, he, so many people are waiting for a move of God. A move of God. And can I tell you, a move of God doesn't, doesn't just happen in some church pews or when we sing three songs. Can I tell you, a move of God happens when, when a child of God receives a word of God and carries forth a message. We are his messengers here on this earth. There's a move of God. God moves with you to bring th things about. Can I tell you that the reason... Uh, Billy Graham carried a he he got a word from God. He there was a move of God because he moved with the word of God. And this is what we're talking about. If you and I would understand this and just reestablish this as his church, as his body, we move with his word. The move of God, we move, when we move with his word. And and the Bible tells us this that the children of God are led by the spirit of God. This is how you and I are to be led. By, from the in, in, inward witness, the, the, by his spirit. And so you'll be walking through the, but, but so many times, we'll dismiss the spirit because of all of the other things that are going on. Anybody busy? You know that one of the greatest enemies to, to, to the plan of God is your and my busyness. Your and my yeses that ultimately mean no's. I had this vision, and I don't know that, or not this vision, but I, 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 I was thinking about this. Yesterday, we went to the farmer's market in Fayetteville, and, um, and 
I had a, I had a, 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 or like some, some, I don't know, I had some stuff that we had bought, and I had my cup of coffee, and we were going to go back all the way to the other corner and get some apples, and uh, I didn't want to have to carry them all the way through. Well, I had Ben Schlegel, which is my cousin, and my, my three boys, and, and Addie is there, and we're all kind of, and I was like, hey, guys, uh, we're going to run, me and Ever are going to run get these apples, and we're going to meet you, we'll come back here, and then we'll go to the car because we're done here. And so I said, hey, can you hold this, you know? so that my hands weren't full so I could go get the apples. And so I was thinking about that, but I, I, and I'm, I'm, maybe some of this doesn't, doesn't make sense um, to why I shared all of that, but uh, for me it do, did because I think I remember seeing, because I handed my stuff to Ben. I don't know if Ben's here this morning. Where is he at? He's serving in a class, okay? And so um, I handed my stuff to him, and he took it, you know, and we took off and got the apples and came back. But this morning, when I was thinking about that, it was just about how we're busy, and, and, and I, remember, I remember him doing something. So it was just, I had a flashback when I handed him my stuff. Um, but what I remember him doing is, I remember him, and I, or, or in this moment, I just remember him doing this. You know, like just setting it on the ground to go. And it just, it just stuck out to me, like I just saw that this morning, that so many times we got our hands full, and well, this is important, hey, we're going to go do this, but unless you can take care of what I care for, then, um, then I can't go. And, uh, but I, I remember, that I don't know where this was at, but I remember seeing this where, and I, I thought, that's kind of crazy that you just set your stuff down on the ground. And then you went over to talk to these people. And I just thought, that it, but I, it was a, I was reminded of that moment, that image that would just, it just stuck with me. And I was reminded of me, how I needed somebody to care for what I cared for, instead of just trusting the Lord to care for what I care for. Amen. You know? And just being able to set some things down to attend to what he's wanting to attend to. And, um, and I think it, that's, a, that's an important thing that we would learn to practice just as I, I would stop and 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 and, sh, and 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 be the salt the fragrance the this the, the what we just all talked about I would stop and when God needs someone to move in their life and I have a message and I the, of God I don't even know what it is but I just know God said go over there and I'll fill your mouth with the words and what whatever needs to happen but but right now I mean Oh, I, I, you know, I got, I got to be, I got to do, I, I got to, I got to, I, I got to, I got to. And this is where even as coming to the church, when we talk about the principles of God's word and things like that and time management and, and, and margin, right? And financial stewardship and all these things matter. Why do they matter? Because they, they it, it matters because of how I have to keep myself active and busy to take care of all of my yeses and, and that maybe less of his you know and this is not a this is not a, by any mean a condemnation this is the question of why are you here why am i here what are we here for i i i challenge you cuz here's the deal if you'll say this lord use me today he will but you might have to do that you just you just might have to do that and did you know that I, I remember that moment, and I remember kind of grabbing it and making sure that everything was good. But there was a trust there that if I could just set it down and do what the Lord's want me to do at that moment, that he'll take care of my stuff. Doesn't that kind of sound like Matthew chapter 6? It does. We're, we're, we're taking care of so many things that I think sometimes we're, we forget about our father's business. You know, and and really, really, what I mean by that is not just our father's business, but our identity, and our purpose, and our fulfillment. There is a strength, there is a refreshment. Um, just like we, you remember the woman at the well. We're going to look at that here in a moment, but I'm not going to look at this portion. But Jesus was wearied from his journey. The Bible says, and so he sat down at this well, and his disciples went to town to get something to eat. And bring it back. And this woman comes out and he talks to 
or we're going to talk about that in a moment, but when the disciples get back, they said, here, Master, eat, knowing that he was wearied. And, uh, and he said, I'm, I'm not hungry. He goes, and the disciples are like, what do you mean you're not hungry? Did he eat when he, did somebody else bring him food? What, what, why is he not hungry? And he said, Jesus says, I have meat that you know not of. And so when you're tired, when you're thirsty, like I don't, I don't see, I see the lady questioning about giving Jesus a drink. I don't see him giving her a drink. Maybe she did there, you know, while he's asking. But I, I just thought about this, that when you're thirsty, give someone else a drink. When you're thirsty, give someone else a drink. And the, when you're tired, give some, somebody else, and it, it'll produce in you a meat or a strength, a, a nourishment that, that is supernatural. There's a supernatural nourishment when you and I understand our purpose. When we understand our purpose and what we were created for, when the light of God's word just illuminates to, to me that, I, wait a minute, I, I, I am the fragrance here on this earth. In, in Alma, in the Alma schools, you're God in those schools. So if the light's out, it's because your light's not lit. If the light's out, young people in those school, it's because we are our little light, this little light of mine, it's just, it's just too hidden. And we're not gonna let it shine. Because, and so we're gonna talk again, we're gonna get to the preaching Jesus here in just, just a moment. Uh, Mark 16, 15, it says this go into all the world and, and to do what? Preach the gospel. That's you're you're the sent ones. Not, not the preacher on the stage. You, matter of fact, if you were to go there in Mark 16, 14, they're in, the, in a room and Jesus rebukes them for, for their unbelief and not believing what they didn't see. And he says, now you go into all the world and preach the gospel. And you know, it says in like verse 19 or 20, and they went and God was with them. And he, and he accompanied them and confirmed the word that was preached. With signs following, confirm the word preached. The word preached means this, to announce a message publicly and with conviction. This is so important as we talk about, we get to the, 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 sta- the statement this morning, preaching who? Jesus. I think this is maybe an intimidating word, preaching. Hey, you want to preach? Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, if I say, hey, here's a mic, you get up here and you go ahead and do the message today. Right, you, you, lot, most people, uh, you know, like I, I thought, like, kind of be fun just to sleep in one Sunday, and just be like, you got it, whatever, you know, <laughs> just wait till the end, cause, cause a lot of times on Sunday morning before church, I, I I'm, I'm not out here, you know, uh, not because I don't want to be, but I can't tell you some of the things that have, people have came up and told me and asked me right before, like I'm just like, really, like, like, you know. Um, and so I just maybe just to be guarded in my heart to be uh, to share. So a lot of times I'll, I'll come into church like maybe 10 minutes before or if I do come, I'll be more upstairs. Not that I don't want to say hello or whatever, but just to be uh, to honor what the Lord's saying. That's right. um, but uh, but so I just thought it would kind of be funny one time, maybe just to just not show up. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. And what would it do? It would, you know, so many times it would intimidate us, right? And I'm not saying because of, you know, we could worship whatever. But I'm just saying so many times we think that preaching is, is so rote. And it, it requires so many notes. And really, preaching, where the word of God is sown, where is it sown? In hearts. And so if we would just learn to speak from our heart and to somebody else's heart, not their head, the message would go forth. We wouldn't be intimidated to preach. The church can't be, you, we can't be intimidated to preach. What I'm talking about is talking from my heart to another's heart about Jesus, who is God's goodness to humanity. It is his mercy. 
to talk about mercy, to talk about God's kindness and God's kindness. I think about the message. He says, so if you're going to go into all the world and preach the gospel, if you're going to preach anything, why would you be intimidated on a Sunday morning? Twyla, why would you be intimidated if I'm like, hey, you're preaching right now? Because you would be like, I don't know what message I'm going to preach. But if you, if you were asked, hey, can you come and just share your testimony from your heart about how God redeemed, you'd be like, right now I could give you the mic and you could get up here and you could just start talking and, and it, what would happen is it would be real. And you know, people are looking for a real God that has such a real person. You're in my testimony. What he's, and we talk about, when we talk about that, we're talking about the mercy, the kindness of God. But I think sometimes uh, in Romans chapter 2, verse 4, it says, Or do you despise the mercy of God, the kindness of God, not knowing that it is the mercy of God that has brought you to repentance? It doesn't say it brings them to repentance. It says, um, but yeah, so put it up there, Romans chapter 2, verse 4. He's talking about judging others, right? In, in 1 through 3, he's talking about judging others and how, you know, don't you also do the same thing? But, don't you, but what was it that caused you to repent? Was it not God's goodness? And he says, do you, do you despise or do you think little um, of the goodness of God? Do you think too little of it? And I, I'm going to say this, we do. We do. We think too little of the testimony of God's goodness to us and not realize that it, it is his goodness that caused you and me to turn to him. Can I tell you that the gospel is good news before it's theology? Can I tell you the gospel is just your testimony of what God has done for you, his goodness? This is the gospel. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Luke chapter 4. He's anointed me to preach the gospel. Did you know he healed, broken, the heart, healed the brokenhearted? Maybe, maybe you didn't belong somewhere and, and God's love just embraced you like you brokenhearted. Testimony, mercy. Guess what? God wants to use his mercy, your testimony, for his glory. Don't despise this, the message. Don't despise, what, not the message, the mercy. How did God's story hit your story? So many times we want to talk about our story, but let's talk about how God's story in his son Jesus and how he, his son Jesus, who, who when there was no way, he made a way through Jesus. How did God's story, his, that faith would be in him, in him alone, that our, our righteousness would be by faith in him and him alone. Not our, like he made the way. Like, let's, let's start there with that good news before we get to all the next. Come on. That's right. We got to get to, we got to have the, the, the mercy of God before we get to the next. Right. It's, it's, it's amazing, even like this. Um, well, well, speaking the truth in love, we, we hear this in Ephesians, we, we, and we quote this, this scripture quite often. Um, it talks about, well, speaking the truth in love, you know, um, that we might grow up, Right? speaking the truth in love that we might grow up. He's not talking to somebody that has never heard the gospel before. Too many times we're trying to grow somebody that's not even saved, that hasn't even received the good news of Jesus Christ yet. You can't grow what's not planted. Like God loves the, loves the world, loves us. Like when the gospel came and it came to you and me, perfection didn't arrive. Christ's works came on, but I wasn't made, I was made whole and perfect spiritually in him. My, I'm three-part being, spirit, soul, and body. My spirit was made new, but I'm being changed. So it wasn't the perfection that I, this body put on perfection. What happened is there was a change of direction. It wasn't perfection. It was a change of my life to, to where now I, I, I had a desire to please him. But even Paul said there's things, I'm doing things that I don't want to do. I'm talking about an invitation. You're an invitation. What does it look like to preach Jesus? It looks like being an invitation. 
And then it talks about how, how the body is built up. How is the body built up? The Bible tells us how. It tells us how through the teaching of the word. Through the, as you put yourself, how are you changed? As you sit before the word. And so this is what's so cool about God. He doesn't disqualify anyone. Like, he doesn't disqualify. It's an invitation. And his mercy towards you, towards me, I'm telling you, what he's done, that, that is the message that you and I carry with, with God into this earth. Um, but unless you realize uh, that, that's, that you're the messengers, unless you realize that you're the fray, then, then we're just going to wait for the church, you know, the organization, the pastor to schedule some outreach event and some, you know, Easter eggs that have an invitation to church because you can't text somebody and be like, hey, you want to go to church? Or you can't just say, hey, let's, I want to get, get you dinner. And so last night, talking about preaching Jesus, we were, again, sharing with our, 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 uh, the serve team, all those that are serving, you know, and saying, hey, I know, and here's the thing about serving, it does, it takes commitment. It takes accountability. Um, but that accountability will release things. Uh, and, and not only will it release things, it'll... It, 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 I'm telling you, it's so, it's so vital for your and my maturity. You know, uh, when somebody becomes mature, they begin to take care of others. How do you know you're growing up in the body of Christ? How do you know you're not an infant? How do you know you're not a toddler? How do you know you're not a teenager? We did, we did this years ago, but we did the series about chairs. Where are you? Well, if you're an adult, you're, you're thinking about the kids. If you're maturing and you're growing, you're thinking about somebody other than yourself. It was so great. Just recently, we were gone for a few days, and um, my, my oldest son, Matthew, uh, w w we got home, and you know the house was, mm, after three or four days, mm, had that smell to it. <laughs> Boys. And then I found out, no, it's meat that got left in the laundry room sink for three days. Anyway. But what he said was so cute. He said, oh, you know, I have to work all day. <laughs> you want to share this testimony? <laughs> I have to work all day, and then I got to come home, and I got to cook dinner, and then by the time I get done cooking dinner, the kitchen's a mess, and I got to try it because the kitchen, when we got home, there were still dishes, right? And even though they had done them for three days, they, every day they produce more. It, it's crazy how this happens. And... Uh, and it's just like, but I don't want to do the dishes by the time I get done. With this. It's like, I'm tired. I'm, and, and I remember I'm going, oh, okay. Really? And, and so it was so cool because what, what, he, what he said was, I'm looking after others. Like, I'm looking after others. This is what, it, this is what happens when someone first comes to Christ. Their, their thoughts are not about looking after others. Their thoughts are about all the, 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 where, I, where I have need of help and need of, but when you move to maturity, you re, you, there's something that you recognize, uh, God's assistance, and you're now looking for others. You know? It's, it's special. So that, I guess that's uh, just talking about, about serving, right? Serving and, and commitment and, and those kind of things. But let's go here. Um, let's go to Matthew chapter 16, uh, 13 through 19. Matthew 16, 13 through 19. I think this is, uh, this is huge. Number one, if you're going to ever carry the message of Jesus, you're going to have to decide who Jesus is. And you're going to have to decide who he is, and you're not, you can't decide here. Young people, who Jesus is, you can't decide here. You, you never, you never, it was never given to you to decide who Jesus who Jesus is here. The Bible says in, 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 in Hebrews, anyone who comes to God must believe that he is. It doesn't say understand that he is. It says believe that he is, okay? 
In Romans, it's, it's in chapter 1, 19 and 20, he says that the man is without excuse. Man is, man is without excuse because it was given to man to know because of what they see through creation that God is and that he exists. It was given to them to know. Like all of mankind knows that there's God. Actually, put it up there so you can see that. He says that all of mankind, 19 and 20, all of mankind knows. No, but the question is, will they acknowledge what they, what they know? What they, what in their knower, not in their understanding, but in their knower, will they acknowledge, uh, will they acknowledge God? Okay? Um, so we'll just keep on going to the next, next deal now. Um, Matthew 16, 13 through 19. When Jesus came uh, to, to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he questioned his disciples, who do you say that the Son of Man is? So it's important that not only others answer this question, but that you answer this question. The message that you and I are to carry is, is not an echo, it's a voice. You're to be, not to be an echo. You're to be a voice. You could say what Pastor Nate says, and that's, okay, that's great. Echo, 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 echo. But what, what God needs is a voice in the earth. Amen. A voice. Where, where it's like when Jesus says, who do men say that I am? Uh, I think we must be frozen here. Matthew 16, 13 through 19. It says, Jesus came to the Caesarea Philippi. He questioned the disciples. Who do people say that the Son of Man is? This is verse 13. They replied, some say you're John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. So others, uh, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, Jesus asked. Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said, you are Christ. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but my Father in heaven. Now, I want to pause there. To establish and to ever carry the message of Jesus, where a church is intimidated so often to carry a message, because I don't know what I'm going to tell them. Can I tell you, when you speak, from your heart, and you speak to their heart about the testimony of who God is, it's not your flesh and blood and your understanding that does the revealing in that moment. It is by His Spirit. What we're, ta what we're talking about, why you're here today, isn't because you have all this understanding. It's because you know in your heart about, a, about the Lord and your need connection with Him. I mean, this is what all of creation, from all of man, from the beginning of creation, has that understanding, and it's not an understanding that natural or flesh and blood can bring to you. It's an understanding that the Holy Spirit, who does His job so well, is doing all the time, but He's looking and He only accompanies the Word of God. So when you come with the word of God and who God is, guess who shows up? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. It's so cool. The Holy Spirit is there to be, he says, verse 17, Blessed are you, son of Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you who you are. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. He's talking to, to, to Peter about you and even how you and I are to operate. We're to operate with our, the words of our mouth by giving, a, 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 by giving voice to what our heart says. When you, how do you know what to bind in heaven or how do you know what to bind on earth? How do you know when you're supposed to, let's just talk about this for a second. How do you know when you're supposed to take authority over a spirit of fear or a spirit of strife? Did somebody come and tell you that? Like, did, was there like a flashing red light? Spirit of strife is on aisle three or it's in the home right now, in the kitchen. Take authority over it right now. There's a spirit of blood, like, or, or whatever. I mean, I, I, you're to buy, buy this right now. Like, where, 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 do you, where do you understand that? Where do I understand that? How do you get that? Right here, by the Spirit of God. Hey, something's going on here. Father, I thank you right now. I bind, I bind any spirit of division or, or spirit of strife or spirit of fear. I bind you up right now and I cast you out. This needs to happen in the church. 
You can go be sharing with somebody uh, from your heart. And somebody, I, I, if you've ever shared the gospel, to like just going out and evangelizing, you might go and start sharing with somebody and somebody else comes in and, uh, and, and there just is confusion. I bind that in the name of Jesus. And you just push, push right through that. I bind that in the name of Jesus. But I loose, but also loose. Did you know that there needs to be more, more loosing and binding by the church? Can, you, can I tell you, in your heart, Father, like you're to loose some things? How, how do I know what to loose? How, can, I, can I just do that? You can do whatever the Lord asks you to do. Well, oh, I don't know what he, I mean, well, a child of God is led by the Spirit of God. No, no, no. It, it's not, it's not a well-seasoned minister who's been in the gospel and walked with him. We've made this far too hard. And we put man on a pedestal to say that, that these, only these people can do the works of God. Garbage. It's these people who are the fragrance. It's all, it's the, who's the fragrance, who is the message, who is God here on this earth. And we can't be intimidated anymore to carry the message of Christ. We can't be. We have to understand, number one, who he is, and that where, where, who, where I got who he is, it didn't come from here, it came to here. And when I speak, I'm not speaking to here, I'm speaking to here to somebody else, from here to there, and guess who's there? The Holy Ghost. Why? Because where I go, there he is. Okay, so this is number one. Number two, as we go there, or no, no, really I hit number one is this, you, you and I can't despise mercy. Knowing it was his, the, the mercy story. We can't despise. Our, the, like I had what my, one of my sons um, tell of a testimony just recently uh, at going to a, a conference. Um, he said, I was talking to somebody and I was hearing these testimonies like, yeah, I was strung out on this and, and, and this and God delivered me and blah, blah, blah. And he's like talking to this guy and, and he's like, ah just like I struggle sometimes like everyone's got these great testimonies and my testimony is like I never did any of that like I just it's just like I don't have I don't have a testimony and the guy said (laughs) that's a testimony God kept me it was him that gave me the will the desire to do when he found me and he kept me. Don't despise the mercy of God, his kindness towards you and towards me. Okay? Number two, establish, establish that God shows up when you open your mouth for his glory. With an invitation. With an invitation. Okay? To, to who he is. When you open your mouth. And can I, can I tell you? That so many times, um, and, and Pastor Evan met, mentioned this last night, but so many times when we think about preaching Jesus, we think of only uh, eternal like salvation. Like In other words, that I'm, my soul is secure in heaven. But can I tell you, when Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he's anointed me to preach the gospel, the good news, it, is that he, he, he went to heal. He went, to, he went to, 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 to deliver. He went to set free. Can I tell you that that's, a lot, excuse me, a little burp there. A lot of, a lot of the message um, that you and I are carrying, and it was his goodness, and it isn't from that place of goodness that causes people to turn to him. Okay, so, all right, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, hmm. I want to... I can't say that I'm closing with this, but I want us to turn to Psalms 16:11 in your Bibles. Jesus, only through Jesus. It, actually, in John 16, they were like, "Hey, Jesus, is like I'm going away," and they're like, "Well, how are we going to know where you go?" And he says, I'm going to the Father. Well, he said, well, how am I going to get there? And Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no man comes to the Father except by me. 
can I tell you that the message of the gospel, so many times we associate it with not joy? Can I tell you that the message of, the, of, of Jesus so many times is associated with outward modification? And that's not, that comes, but the message of Jesus, to preach Jesus, is that you and I have access to a loving Father. That's, that's the message of Jesus. You and I have access to the Lord. This is why he sent Jesus. This is the, this is the nuts and bolts, ultimately, of, of the gospel. From you, read, you read your Bible. When man fell, God had to find a man that was willing to br- in order to bring his will here on this earth, working with man's will, that he would send Jesus to pay a price. A price would be paid so that a holy God, a holy God where could, could have fellowship with man again, It took a payment of Jesus so that we could be back. The good news and the news of heaven is not the streets of gold. It's that he's there. And we get to be together again. So that's the message of the gospel. The rest is this outworking. It comes about. Okay? It comes about. There is sanctification where you work out your salvation. It comes out, the Bible says, with fear and trembling. But the message of, of preaching Jesus and bringing the gospel out, it, what, it, what it looks like is this. You can come into God's presence. Look at what it says it is in God's presence. Uh, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, what's there? Can I tell you that salvation is the most joyous thing ever? Can I, I'm telling you, if you understand what salvation is, and God paid the price for you, and in his, let me tell you, in his presence, there's just joy there. Because I cease from my works and my striving, and I trust and I just rest on him. And, I, and, there, and from that place of joy, I serve. From that place of joy, I live a life. From that place of joy, and in his presence, I have help. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand, can I tell you, there's pleasures evermore. Ephesians chapter 1, that when it talks about how be, when you come into Christ, how he raised us up to sit together at his right hand. Can I tell you, when you get born again, that there, he says that in this place and at your right hand, like being born again, it should be the most pleasurable thing you've ever experienced. It's so much greater than what the world has to offer. It's so much greater. There's a joy and a peace and a wholeness for your life, for your family, and your finances. that You, re- you, you no longer are looking for the cup. You're bringing the cup. That's a, that's, a, that's a great place to be. I'm not looking to be refreshed. I'm just looking to refresh. I'm looking to carry a message of some good news. Oh, you're, this is the gospel. Oh, you're hurting? Let me tell you about a healer and how he healed me in my heart. Oh, this is going on? You need healing in your body? Okay, let me tell you about when I needed healing. Let me tell you about, this, is, this matters. It changes. I'm no longer looking. I'm the one that has. Out of my belly, there's a river of life. Woo, that's a good thing. Oh, I have more than enough to give unto every good work. How many of you, how many of you would, maybe your countenance would change if you had more than enough to give to every good work? Let me tell you, you've been given a God who's more than enough for every good work that you've been called to do and commissioned to do and go carry a message of Jesus. That's a cool deal. That's just, that's exciting. That's a joyous place. And this is why it matters that when you're born again, you come and you sit before the word, and this is how God assembles the body of Christ in every gift. And Ephesians chapter 4 says that you're equipped for your works of ministry. How he gives gifts to the body, gifts, spiritual gifts, as a pastor, a teacher, a prophet, so that for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry. If you don't know that you carry, you don't know some of these things, you're going to go, well, you'll be unequipped, and because you don't have the equipment, you won't be put to work. It matters. It matters what you hear. It matters what you know. It matters the light that is before your, before your feet, before your path. It matters that you know that you're the message. 
it matters that you know that you're the message. Uh, can I tell you that the life that you live, the gifts that you've been given, um, and how you steward them, I don't answer for that. But you do. And um, I, I, I love having this here because it'll, it, it's kind of like stewardship is, is so much easier when somebody's asking you or reminding you that that's part of my job. Uh-huh. Not job, but just call yeah. is, is uh, to remind us of what God is saying and to equip us. Well, Lord, what are you saying? What are you wanting us to hear? What are you wanting us to know? Because can I tell you that I can't say that I did my job here? Can I tell you that my job, right, what I mean by my job, I did my job in the body of Christ or just when I stood here? Can I tell you that when I go to Walmart or when I'm at a ball game or I'm in, at the faith, that my, my work continues the same as yours? That's, that's, where, that's where I get to exercise. That's where I get to exercise, uh, exercise my faith. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close with the, the passage that I, I, I didn't get to, so I just have a, uh, John chapter 4, 7 through 9. Um, oh, man. Thank you, Lord. You know, Jesus wept over Jerusalem. He said, um, I'm just going to read it. Luke 19, 41, Jesus approached Jerusalem, saw the city. He wept over it. And he said, if only your eyes, if only you had known on this day what would bring you peace. But now it will be hidden from your eyes. He wept over it. Can I tell you that you, you, until you weep over what God weeps over, you need to check your message. Church, until you weep over what God weeps over? When you see somebody that is hurting, if you're not weeping, but instead casting, this is kind of like the third piece, don't despise the mercy, know who he is, know that he shows up. There's multiple pieces, but this last one is like, do you know Do you know the message that you're to carry comes from a heart that is just in love with them? Paul said this in Ephesians 3. He said, seeing the greatness of the plan, I bow my knees. Like grasping the greatness of the plan. I bow my knees under to which the whole heaven and earth derives its name. In other words, he's talking about all of humanity gets its name or comes into the name of the, fa- of the Father. He says, I bow my knees seeing how great it is and, and I pray that you would be filled with the fullness of the love of God, that you would know how wide, how deep, how, like this is our prayer, Lord, help me, commu- and this is uh, Colossians, help me, help me communicate it clearly. Help me speak truth, truthfully the message, that, that it would be clear. What is this message? It comes, it doesn't originate from any other place but His love. The message that you and I are going to carry, the message of Jesus, it only originates from his love. And unless we're weeping over what he's weeping over, unless our heart just longs for people to come to just know him and his goodness and his kindness and, and his help and his victory, and when you call, he answers, and he's nearness to the brokenhearted, and like all of the promises, like unless we know that, We'll, we'll be limited in our message. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Did you know Jesus has a look of love? Matthew, or Mark 10, 21, he tells us this is when he was talking to the rich young ruler. And I want to make sure that this is clear when I talk about loving people. Jesus said, or it says this, that Jesus looked at him and, and loved him. What is his... What do you think Jesus' eyes looked like when he looked at this rich young ruler who, who, who eventually walked away and was sad? 
He looked at him, he loved him, and he told him what? The truth. Can I make it very clear that love always, always speaks the truth or what is needed at the time? Speaks the truth. But can I also tell you, this man was asking for what does it look like to continue walking with God? And so he answered this way. Can I tell you that Jesus drew in the sand and answered a lot of questions a lot of different ways? He didn't just answer them in, with a scripture. He answered them according to the Spirit of God, which was in the Word of God. But there's certain things you apply at different times. Okay? Now, so I, I want you to understand and I want you to hear the message you carry. It's truth. But the truth that you pull out at that time depends on what God is saying. Again, this is where you and I are. We're not on our own. We're just checking. We're checking, okay? And, and I want to close with this, this passage, John chapter 4, 7 through 9, because this really is preaching Jesus. Uh, John 4, 7 through 9 comes, oh, let's see here. A Samaritan woman came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone to, gone to town to buy food. She said, verse 9, you're a Jew. How can you ask a drink from a Samaritan woman? Now, you've got to understand, it wasn't just that she was a woman. It was that she was a Samaritan. It wasn't just that she was a Samaritan. She was a Samaritan woman who was gathering water at a well during the middle of the day, which meant she was a social outcast. In other words, well, maybe a harlot or lots of husbands. She's had lots of husbands. How those other ones left or she left, we don't know. But we do know that she didn't belong. In verse 17, Jesus, so he asks her, you know, hey, can I get a drink? And she says, how is it you're talking to a woman? How is it you're talking to a Samaritan woman? How is it that you're talking to me? And in verse 17, as you go down there, um, he said, why don't you go get your husband? And she says this, I have no husband, the woman replied. And Jesus said to her, you're correct. You're correct. You say I have no husband. In fact, you have five husbands, you dirty, filthy thing. No. Could he have said that, don't you know that this is, and the guy that you're living with right now is not your husband? Don't you know the Bible says flee sexual immorality? Don't you know it says this, it says this. Don't you know? How many of you know Jesus was totally the one that could have said anything in the word. But what he chose to acknowledge was the fact that truth was in her. Wow. As I was reading that, he goes, hey, hey, and, and the guy you're with right now, that's not your husband? You're full of truth. Whoa. He called something out of her. He saw something good in her. Love spoke there. See, love speaks. See, this, this love speaking, when Jesus looked at that rich young ruler and loved him, he looked with his eyes and he loved him. He was bringing a word that would free him or bring a direction or allow, uh, but his choice was to walk away. The same way that, uh, that this, this woman, her, her, the same words, the same words out of Jesus' mouth, a word speaking truth to her, it, it, changed, it opened her up, your truth. Okay, I perceive you're a prophet, <laughs> is what she goes on to say. And as you go through here, um, you go to verse 39, it says this, that uh, after he talked with her, many of the Samaritans from the town believed in Jesus because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. Come and see this man. Verse 41, and many more believed because of, because of Jesus' message. And then they said to the woman, we now believe not only because of your words, but we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man truly is the savior of the world. Can I tell you that the end, of the end goal is not just to preach Jesus one, one time, but it's so that somebody would hear your message and then hear for themselves and it, they, would, they would grow and from faith to faith to faith and they would now become not just ones that are hearers of the message, but carriers of the message. And I'm telling you, um, Jesus talks about lift up your eyes. The fields are ripe with harvest. Lift up your eyes. He's, he, they're already coming out. 
He said, you were saying it's going to be a while. And he's saying, look at them all coming right now. The same way that when it was time for a harvest season, the fields would be filled with workers. Can I tell you now in this season in which we, we're living, the fields, God is saying, we have so many, so many harvesters. We have so many carriers of the message, and, and we can't, we've gotten off as the church thinking that the church is just this organization, and what are we doing as a church, and whatever's planned, and whatever, and we have been, we've had a church that's unoccupied and, and doing this, and just because of humanity, we like to see what little we can get away with, and, and, and that's how we live. But can I tell you, God's bringing back the life to the church, the heartbeat and the touch and the tenderness to his body beyond the four walls. And he desires to speak through you, to love through you, to refresh through you, to serve through you. This is what he, this is what he desires to do. You're a fragrance, you're a light, you're a salt, you're an invite, you're the very presence of God here on this earth. Let me say it this way, in Alma at your workplace, in your school. Preach Jesus. Preach means to announce publicly and, and with conviction. Who do you say that Jesus is? Is he the hope of the world? Is he your hope? Is he your savior? How do you know? I know. Let me tell you, when you share that with somebody else, guess who's gonna show up? God shows up. And guess where he's gonna speak? right here, and it'll be up to them whether they receive or don't receive. But whether someone receives or doesn't receive, don't stop preaching. Don't stop knocking. Listen, there's going to be persecution. Persecution for, for your faith will increase. Persecution as we get the word out and preach Jesus, everyone, everywhere. Can I tell you that the devil won't like it? But guess what? We're going to preach the word. Would you say, I'm preacher. I'm a preacher. Would you say, I'm a preacher. You're a preacher. You're a preacher. We're, we're preachers. We're preachers of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who, made, who God made a way by sending his son Jesus when there was no way. So there's a way. Let me tell you, for every hardship, for every, you know, down, let me tell you, there's a way. Well, it just seems like, let me tell you, there's a way. And, and that's the good news. His name is Jesus. Amen. Let's stand this morning. Thank you, Lord. Preaching Jesus. So we're going to be talking about the, over this the next uh, couple weeks. Preaching Jesus. What does it look like to preach Jesus? It looks like, it looks like mercy is what it looks like. It looks like mercy. That's what it looks like. Sometimes his mercy is uh, go sell your goods. Give them to the poor. Can I tell you, there are times you're going to come to church and your toes are going to feel like they got stepped all over. And you might leave sad. But that was God's love and his eyes looking at you. I, I just, I want you to close your eyes this morning. In that passage where it says Jesus looked at him and loved him. I want you to imagine yourself experiencing those eyes on you. What does it look like for God to look at you and love you? Just, I want you to imagine those eyes. He can love you with a look. Now I want us to put those eyes, those same eyes where he looks at us and he says, and he loves us without words, just with a look. I want you to take those same eyes and now I want you to look at your community. I want you to look at your enemy. I want you to look at the world. Father, I'm asking today when 
and pray your word over our body, over your body. Lord, today we bow our knees and we thank you that we grasp the greatness of your plan by which you're joining together, both Gentiles, Jews, this world in Christ. Lord, we bow our knees in reverence before you, understanding that it is you that we all find our identity. It's in you that are our Father. You are our Father. And we ask you that you would give us strength to understand your love, how wide, how deep, how extensive, all the different dynamics of your love, of your kindness, of your mercy that you extend. Fill us with that. Let us be aware of that. Let us know that. Let us use that. Let us receive that. Your love for us and your love in us for others. That faith would find its action, that faith would find its work because of your love. Because of your love. How can we love except for you first? having loved us. Lord, thank you that we'd hear that today. Your love for us. Your love for us. We just receive your love this morning that you displayed when you sent your son Jesus to pay a price that we couldn't. You sent your son into this world not to condemn it, but so that we could have a life filled with goodness, with your presence. So Father, thank you for that today, for these people, your, the body, your body. I thank you for the fullness of your presence. And in your presence, fullness of joy. I thank you for joy in homes. I saw a man in the back on the left right here. I just saw joy in your house. You're sitting with your wife. I'm not even looking at you because you know who you are. I saw joy entering your heart and entering your home. Supernatural peace and his goodness where you just seemed like a skeptic. God just wanting to just show you joy show you pleasures evermore. Father, thank you for that. Thank you that you're doing that in your people. You're doing that in this house. You're doing that because you love so much. We thank you for it. Thank you for a testimony and that we would, we would not despise it but acknowledge the testimony of your goodness and your mercy in our lives that we would go forth from this place carrying and preaching boldly with conviction the message of your son Jesus. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name. Now, I can't close this morning's service without me sharing and giving an invite to Jesus. And I shared about who Jesus is all morning. But if I close the service without... There's people watching online every week. It's going all over the world. God loves you so much that he sent his only son, Jesus, to pay a price where you couldn't. He said anyone that comes to him just must believe that he... Believe in your heart and confess him as Lord and you'd be saved. We make it so many times too hard, and we make it gymnastics. I'm asking you, who do you say that Jesus is? If you've never declared Jesus as your Lord, and today you want to do that, I'm asking you to lift your hand. If you're watching online, why don't you just lift your hand in your living room, in your car, wherever you're at. But if that's you this morning, and you're in this house, and you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, you've never declared publicly Jesus as Lord, I want you to lift your hands. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Why don't you ask the neighbor, your person next to you, have you made Jesus your Lord? How do you know where you'd spend eternity? This matters. How do you know, Kyle, where you'd spend eternity if your life was required of you today? How do you know? Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is... Somebody say it. Jesus 
is Lord. Jesus is my Lord. And Jesus is the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. And, I, you know, I didn't pray. We could pray online. Huh. I'll be with you right here, right now. It says, believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. Jesus says, Lord, I'll lead you in a prayer of salvation. Just say these words after me. Just say, Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus for me to make a way so I could come to you. I believe that he died for my sins, that he rose, and through his resurrection, I am justified. Today, I declare you're my Lord. Thank you for saving me. I trust you for my salvation. Your righteousness, not my works, is mine. Thank you for saving me. Amen, amen. God bless you. Have a great week.